Hey guys, Rick Kakis here, and today it's time for another Nightfall Gold Tier Guide, showcasing not only how to beat this week's Nightfall from March 21st to the 28th, the last week of Destiny before the Age of Triumph, but also showcasing some tips for how to achieve that Gold Tier rating and hopefully get the Icebreaker Exotic Snipe Rifle from the Sunrise Bounty given out by Zavala. So let's get started with my recommended build, but to go over that we need to of course go over this week's Nightfall modifiers. And boy it's a doozy in the sense that there is really bad modifiers this week. It's gonna be a struggle for anyone to complete this. Firstly, we have fresh troops. This is going to make more enemies spawn than normal. So if a group of five enemies would normally spawn, seven enemies may spawn instead. Now normally this is a bad thing, and in most cases it is a bad thing. More enemies means more ways to die essentially. However, with the point system introduced, Fresh Troops does make it a lot easier to get that gold tier rating because you get so many more kills and therefore so many more points. After that we have Match Game. This one really sucks. It makes it so that if you're shooting an enemy with a, let's say, solar shield, like a solar shielded wizard, and you're shooting him with anything other than a solar weapon, it's going to do significantly less damage than it normally does. And this means that for your build, you're going to want to try to diversify the amount of elements you have present. After that, we have the one and only positive modifier for this week, making your grenades recharge significantly faster. This is going to be the most important asset in our build because it's the, again, the only positive modifier. And lastly, we have exposure. This means that you have a lot more shields than normal, but they basically don't recharge. So once you get to low health, you are really going to need to play safe. Now as for my recommended build, in terms of subclass, use whatever you want. Because there's no elemental burn, the subclass is really just up to your personal preference. I was using the Sunsinger Warlock and that's mainly for my exotic armor piece which we'll go over in a sec. Now I'm using the Steel Medulla Wrath of the Machine Pulse Rifle. If you do have any Wrath of the Machine weapon, it's going to be very good in this week's Nightfall simply because you're facing a lot of Fallen in the featured strike which is the shadow thief so after that the devil's dawn is what i ended up using but i started using an arc curtain call i just wanted to mix up my elements use a good weapon that has a different element hopefully than what you're using in your subclass it would have been problematic if i would have gone with all solar damage a solar subclass solar secondary and a solar heavy because the match game modifier would definitely punish you for doing so. Now in terms of my heavy I am using the sleeper simulant. Although it is solar and I should probably be using something else, something void, the sleeper is just a very very good weapon and it's going to dump truck damage onto the boss. Now moving on to armor, I am using the sunbreakers. The reason being is because it gives me an extra solar grenade. That's really all there is to it. There is a ton of different exotic armor pieces out there, the armamentarium, you know, the sunbreakers, the nothing manacles, etc. that give you an extra grenade. Whatever one you have and like the most, use that because getting two grenades when there's catapult is absolutely excellent and it's something that you definitely need to do. Alright, now let's move on to the Nightfall walkthrough. You're going to start off and right away you're in for a fight. Because of fresh troops, there's going to be a lot of enemies coming at you. I was actually surprised by how many enemies there were, not only in this beginning section, but in the section right after that. But remember to kill these enemies, although a lot of people do, especially in the normal strike, run through these guys, you're missing out on points, so make sure to throw some grenades just as you're passing by. You certainly don't need to spend time killing every single enemy here, but if there's a group of thralls, you definitely gotta plant a grenade amongst them. 
After that, you're going to get inside and, again, get ready for a fight. Not only is there the usual uh, cascade of a bunch of Explorer Thralls, but then there was some Hallowed Ogres. And not just one, but actually two big Hallowed Ogres. So that's going to be a little bit problematic if you're not expecting it. Those things can do some pretty good damage. So once you kill these guys, they give you 3,000 points each. Definitely worth killing those Ogres. Once you kill them, you're going to move further into this complex and you're going to have your first kind of proper encounter. And this is going to be against a lot of Hive enemies and Tanix himself is there as well. Now at this point, you simply need to kill everything. I would recommend killing the adds first. Otherwise, you can kind of get too distracted by trying to damage Tanix. He does a lot of damage himself and you do not want, you know, Tanix to destroy you when you get away with a sliver and then the Boomer Knight that you've been ignoring in the back finishes you off. So clear out the adds first, then move on to Tanix. Uh, you can damage him a certain amount, but once that immune starts popping up, stop damaging him because he won't take any more damage. He's going to go up the teleporter, you gotta follow him, and then that's going to lead to your next big encounter in this open area of the ship. So this part, it's really important to remember that it's it's kind of the same thing. There's a lot of adds and Tanix is present as well. Again, it's the balancing act of when can you damage Tanix versus when can you take care of the adds. You really need to juggle these two things in order to succeed, if you get too focused on trying to kill Tanix, the adds will get the better of you. A lot of them spawn. But if you get too focused on taking down the adds, you're not going to do as much damage to Tanix. You actually have the opportunity to do a lot of damage to him in this encounter. And then he'll have that damage done to him when you fight him in the final encounter. However, because of this remade, sevified version of the strike, no matter how much damage you do to him, you're still going to have to go through kind of the same amount of phases in the final encounter because he's going to become immune and make you take down those SIVA clusters, but still, it is definitely worth doing as much damage as possible. So, damage the crap out of Tanix when you can with your heavies, with your snipers, but also keep an eye on those adds. Don't let them overwhelm you. Now, once Tanix has had enough of your shenanigans, he's going to teleport further into this complex and you're going to follow him, killing a bunch of adds on the way, but you're going to enter another big open area of the ship and you have another big encounter when you have to deal with a sevified fallen walker. This thing is definitely no joke. It can do a ton of damage, but the bullets are definitely a little bit easier to finagle your way out of than definitely the normal fallen tanks, at least in my opinion. The main thing with this encounter is that not only are you going to have to be aware of the tank, but there are so many enemies and powerful enemies at that. Scorch Captains, there's going to be Shriekers, there's going to be Boomer Knights, Reaver Captains, just a ton of actually pretty powerful adds that are going to try to kill you. So the main thing is don't get too aggressive. Kind of stick to the back, don't push forward too much trying to get that damage on the tank because there's going to be enemies spawning behind you. The enemies kind of do spawn health gated to the tank so once you do a lot of damage to the tank you're going to trigger a ton of enemies to spawn so be aware of that don't be up too far in the front part of this arena damaging the tank and then suddenly oh there's a reaver captain punching you from behind that can be pretty problematic now another as dj khaled would say major key for this encounter is really don't bunch up now i mean actively avoid bunching up with your teammates. If you see a teammate come towards you and stand right beside you, you need to move away from him. There has been so many wipes on this encounter because too many teammates stand right beside each other. They're all scoped in with icebreakers and they're not paying attention. And then suddenly the tank kills them all. So make sure that doesn't happen to your group. Make sure you're spread apart enough that if the tank does take down one or two of your teammates, the last one can be the saving grace and revive everyone. 
but just take it slow, deal with the adds when they spawn, and chip away at the tank, and you should definitely get past this encounter. And when you do, you are going to have to actually fight Tanix through those hallways. Just remember that. Don't run forward with your entire team and Tanix spawns right in front of you and crushes your team. That's definitely a possibility. In fact, I've even seen that. It's not very good. Make sure to, you know, send one person forward, trigger him in those hallways, back off, do some damage, and just kind of work your way through that hallway to the final boss encounter. Now, just a very quick reiteration of the mechanics. Once you damage Tanix enough, he's going to become immune and get a shield. Once this happens, you're going to have to kill every single one of the SIVA clusters in the final boss fight arena. Once you do, the text is going to pop up that he loses his power. He's going to be available to damage again until you damage him a certain amount. And the same thing is going to happen. Rinse and repeat. Now, probably the best place to hold out is this upper platform. There's a stairway off in the left side of the arena once you first walk in that leads to this, again, raised platform and there is some amount of cover in the form of these wall-like barriers on this raised platform. If you are there, you can completely avoid Tanix and pretty much every other enemy's shots but you have to be paying attention. Being up here, you're still gonna get shot at, and if he gets a good angle on you, you can definitely still get hit. So this is probably the best place to hold out, yet it's not somewhere that you can just place yourself in the entire time. You're likely to have to move, especially because Tanix can teleport pretty damn close to you. So you're going to likely find yourself overwhelmed. You're gonna have to jump away, lead Tanix and the adds away from this spot, and then just come back. Now my team definitely ended up taking this a little slow and that's because I was actually with a 340 light guardian. I didn't have any really teammates online so I had to scramble and make do. So again, that's why I'm playing a little bit slow but it should give you an actually pretty good example of if you're in not that great of a situation, how to play, how to play very, very safe. And you'll see kind of the benefits of playing the Rez Sunsinger Warlock coming up because a couple of times I do die and I'm able to revive myself and keep going and that's definitely something that shouldn't be overlooked especially with all these negative modifiers. And so guys follow these tips and you should be able to beat this week's Nightfall. Now if you do and you're interested in getting the Strike Horde chest remember that the featured weapon is the Does Not Bow Auto Rifle. Frankly, it's not very good. It has pretty bad stats, and if you're interested in an auto rifle like that, the Shadow Price from the Vanguard has it beat in pretty much every way. But there is also an exclusive Hunter Cloak, among other things. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. Now, if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.